Hi, and welcome to this episode on conditional image diffusion. Um, so first of all, uh, we can guide our diffusion process in all sorts of ways. Uh, and we can have sources of guidance that include class labels, images, text, or pretty much anything else. So when we diffuse our images or whatever other signal that the network is supposed to diffuse, we can actually use all sorts of conditioning. And you've probably seen some examples of text to image diffusion. And in that case, text becomes the condition, okay? And uh, one of the uh, earliest uh, developments in, in, this, in this context was guided diffusion. So uh, in, in, in the diffusion models beat Kant's on image synthesis paper, uh, it has been proposed to guide the diffusion process. Uh, so um, we train a classifier to predict class Y given uh, X, T, and T. So we don't just use a regular classifier. We use a classifier that has the context of uh, the, diff the stage of diffusion. And uh, so, so basically, we need to train it on noisy images, just, just like we trained the generative model. And during uh, when, when we predict noise, uh, we can essentially uh, add an, add an additional term to our uh, to our uh, basic uh, approximation based on the neural network parameters. Uh, again, the derivation is in the paper, but essentially it's a matter of adding uh, an additional term that is based on the gradient. So essentially we want to uh, maximize uh, the likelihood of the class Y uh, for a specific uh, uh, given, given the current XT image, okay? So uh, at this point, it's not only about removing the noise, it's also about uh, maximizing the likelihood of a specific class, okay? So that's called classifier guidance, uh, one of the earliest mechanisms. Uh, in, the same paper, in the same paper, we also there has also been a proposal of classifier-free guidance, where a diffusion model takes class label Y as input, but during training, it replaces it with a null net label for some samples, okay? So, uh, and then during sampling, what we do is again we have our uh, our basic uh, prediction of noise based on parameters theta and our label, and then we add to that an additional term uh, scaled by a, a factor s, which is basically our hyper parameter, and basically this uh, this additional term is the difference between the noise predicted with the label y. Sub with uh, with the noise uh, uh, predicted with a null label uh, for the same sample. Okay, um, so that way we actually avoid uh, we avoid using a, a separate classifier model. We have a model that takes label y as input. Okay, and that's classifier free guidance. Uh, there's also other types of guidance in Glide, uh, for example. Clip, which is a general uh, text plus vision, text plus image model, uh, has been used to uh, guide the samples. Uh, so clip model can uh, measure uh, a specific consistency between uh, text input and image input. Uh, the, the, dot product is, the dot product between the encodings of text and image in clip are, is basically uh, a, a, a certain measure of consistency. And we can use this. Uh, for uh, computing a certain score and incorporate it in a similar fashion to, uh, to the classifier guidance, okay? Um, in, in, for, for Glide, the clip is also retrained, uh, on noisy, retrained on noisy samples. So we also follow uh, a similar principle of training our classifier or some other model used for guidance on noisy samples with uh, temporal context and temporal means the stage of diffusion, okay? So we can look at uh, the comparison from the Glide paper between uh, class, uh, clip, uh, clip vanilla uh, guidance, uh, clip retrained guidance, and classifier free uh, guidance, okay? Um, and there seems to be uh, quite an improvement, first of all, uh, by uh, provided by retraining clip, and second, uh, by using classifier-free uh, guidance, okay? So these were the first steps uh, towards conditioning uh, image, uh, image generation process in diffusion models. 
Now, what we will be interested in uh, in this course will be to the translation of images to images. So it will be a slightly different uh, context, yet uh, I think guided diffusion is definitely one of the key uh, one of the key developments that need to be kept in mind. Uh, so for image to image diffusion, our uh, an image will be our condition. So it will work in a slightly different way. Uh, in the work uh, of uh, Palette, uh, this condition is often supplied by concatenating the input condition with our denoise sample. So whenever we do diffusion, we often have a an, a model like a unit with takes a noisy image and it predicts the noise present in that image. In this case, this input will contain both the diffused image and also the, uh, our input condition, which will, be, uh, which will have no, no noise added to it, okay? And that's what we will do for our experiments as well. So uh, like in the uh, standard uh, version of diffusion, we have uh, our clean sample, we get use the forward process to get our X, uh, XT, but we also have a condition image. And what we will do is we'll concatenate both uh, and feed that into the network. And then we will perform sampling. And at the end of the sampling, we will get our uh, X0, okay? So by following this simple mechanism, we can actually train image to image translation models. Uh, again, it takes about 10 hours to train a 64 by 64, uh, model and this is our input. This is our ground truth, and it can predict these types of uh, samples. Okay. Um, so in the next episode, we will be able to see uh, how how this is implemented and how to run a uh, image to image translation notebook. Okay. Cheers.